And now, you know, there's the Desperado from Black taking on either F2 or H2. So after Rook takes D8, White here is a pawn up. Um, but more significantly, according to Ribka, it is plus 3. I think, so why is it plus 3? Because, um, in fact, there's three different, at least three different candidate Ribka moves here which give plus 3 unbelievably. In fact, 4 which is over 2.7, 5 over 2.7 in fact. You, you will not believe, you know, white in this position is really crushing black. So the principal um, move at the moment, bishop g5, so that's forking the rook and knight here. Rook takes d4, rook takes e6. And look at these queenside pawns, they're quite weak. So knight f5, rook takes b6. So black's really had it here in this ending. Maybe, you know, white wasn't geared up to accept an ending and just munching on b6. Um, he wasn't looking for that kind of thing. But it seems that after this knight takes f7, that solves the major m pre problem. And also attacking black's rook. But anyway, in this position, apparently... The master went back to different candidate moves um, earlier because he didn't like um, this this queen to rook five from black. So even though it's quite harmless to momentarily uh, leave his pieces and pre. So it seems actually another case of something I think I've mentioned in the previous video of the threat is often you know looks stronger than the execution. Although black's got two imminent threats here, um, you do need to sometimes look a bit deeper in calculation to to make sure that that's as scary as it looks. And here, it's knight takes f7, which doesn't, which makes it less actual scary than, than it looks. Um, if um, king takes, then bishop takes e6 check. And now if king f8, it's in this position, so white is temporarily a piece down for free pawns. But, um, you know, the, the two black bishops are visually, you know, on the queen side. They're not immediately helping the black king. And this knight can be used as a tempo gain. And there's actually the concrete rook g4 here, which turns the tables a bit. So the knight um, can either take on g2 here, or otherwise it's got no move. Um, so say it takes on g2, attacking the white rook. This is seemingly a tactical mess, but now white has bishop takes c8, and after rook takes c8, rook takes g2. So again, white ends up with this better ending after all this. The smoke is cleared. Two pawns up. So it seems, yeah, the master rejected incorrectly the whole idea of knight g4 in the initial position as being the strongest um, move. So Kotov goes on to say, and once again his thoughts dwelt upon the rarest ramifications of the two moves, um, of those two moves um, which he had previously considered. The captures on, on rooks 6 and knight 6 again. And they didn't appeal to the master. So once more he returned to consider knight to knight 4 and again he didn't find a win there. So how many times did he jump from one variation to the other? He often thought about this and that attempt to win and only time to tell. Only he can tell. Then time table came creeping in and the master decided to play a safe move. So in the initial position um, a safe move was played which didn't demand any real analysis. So the master just re tried to reinforce temporarily his, his knight outpost. He played actually bishop c3 here. And Ribka thinks, you know, black's a lot better immediately after bishop c3. But look at the, la the weakness of the last move again. Bishop c3, you know, loses control of the f4 square. So black pounces in now with knight f4 with an advantage, which is the Ribka's suggestion. So just looking at the last move gives a good candidate move for the opponent. Queen g4 now. And now again, curiously, um, in this position... Believe it or not, 
the opponent plays Ribka's first suggestion. So the opponent's like a Ribka, he plays h5, i.e. pawns king rook 4, driving the queen back. And now, after queen to queen 1, um, the opponent misses apparently the strongest continuation, which is bishop takes e5. Ribka really fancies that. Instead, the opponent played pawn to rook 5, and apparently white had to resign. Although Ribka thinks it's minus 0 0.69, it's not. It's less than a pawn after rook g4. So why would that be? It gives actually h3 here. And after g3, bishop takes e5. After rook takes e5, knight d3. Attacking e5 and f2. And if queen d3, then there's the pin. Queen takes e5. So it's still a bit of a tactical mess here going on. But what if rook e2? Then there's queen f3. And this diagonal is mating the white king. So that's part of the aggression behind the opponent's continuation, is that he's actually ripping open this diagonal for the bishop. So what do we learn from all this so far? Then um, Kotov goes on to say, no, white was wrong to reject knight g4. Because after queen to rook 5, knight takes pawn check, king to bishop 1, queen takes, knight takes, then, you know, um, knight takes, pawn was given. By Kotov here in this in this variation, king takes knight, bishop takes pawn check. So Kotov's using Ribka's first candidate move here, just just sacking on f7, and bishop takes on e6, king to bishop one, and again Ribka's first move, rook g4. So this quiet killer move, rook g4 features again. So basically because of this stranded knight, um, white's regaining the material, so he's temporarily um, pieced down. But it is for free pawns here, so, um, you know, to, to this seems, you know, the master should have looked a bit more. It seems he was more afraid of the look of the position than the actual substance. So after knight takes pawn, and actually Kotov gives here, not bishop takes c8, but bishop knight 4, which is um, Ribka's second choice candidate move, which white still retains an advantage. Bishop to queen 3, bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop, bishop takes rook, knight takes rook, bishop takes bishop, and white would win. According to Ribka, white is better by about a pawn, but the other continuation was actually a little strong with bishop takes c8, maybe. Um, so after this, um, king take king takes f f7. I'm going to promote that sub variation. So bishop e6, and then this killer rook g4. So now bishop takes c8. Apparently, is stronger. Just to recap. So a lot of simplification occurs, and White has a better ending. And then Kotov, you know, says, "Can you remember cases when this happened to you in tournament games?" No doubt you can. So let us learn how to to think about moves with the greatest efficiency. Okay, now this example is uh, very interesting because if we look at the initial position, it is, you know in what I'd consider a very critical position, because if white doesn't make the most of the attack, then of course the isolated queen pawn is going to be really bad. Not just um, potentially in the middle game for blockades on the isolated queen pawn, um, but also in the endings, you know. And black has very, you know, good coordination of pieces here otherwise, if he can withstand the attack. So white really did have to make the most out of the attack here, it was critical.
to find the most accurate move. Um, let's just make sure, though, with, with the aid of Ribka, that there wasn't anything even stronger. 